I'm Tony from Rolling with the Bowens, and today we're going to talk about trucks. So the saga continues, gas or diesel, diesel or gas. Yeah, got a guy, it's a diesel person. It's all diesel, diesel all day. Diesel's the best way to go. Diesel's all this, diesel's all that. You got the guy over here with the gas. Gas is where it's at, gas is here, gas is that, you know. There's always gonna be this argument whether a diesel truck is better than a gas truck. Really it comes down to your personal preference, how much money you're willing to spend. If you're made of money, a diesel's where it's at. Because not only are you paying six to seven dollars a gallon for diesel, you're also paying for diesel exhaust fluid, death in layman's terms. Now that stuff ranges anywhere between three to three fifty a gallon right now, and there's also talking about shortage of death. Is it a wise decision to get into a diesel right now? Maybe not. Is a gas truck going to be your friend? Well, you know what? Gas truck very well may be your friend right now. Well, let's face it, ain't nothing going to be your friend at the gas pump right now, especially if you do a lot of traveling, a lot of towing, you're just pretty much, you break out another thousand. It should be another hundred for gas, but now it's a thousand because of this crap. But anyway, the biggest thing is you need to figure out what's best for you, what's the right size truck for you, because you definitely want to be safe about whatever you are towing. Now, if you got a big monster, monster of an RV, you're going to need a dually, not a single rear wheel. And a diesel may work a little bit better for you on that just because of the sheer weight, because of the torque a diesel has versus a gas truck. Now, horsepower ratings between some of the diesels and the gas, they're really not that far apart. It really comes down to the torque. The torque is what really makes your power, guys. But also, with that added big bunch of torque, you also have that extra repair bill prices that you have. So you're going to need a specialty mechanic to work on it if it breaks down or not if it breaks down, it, when it breaks down. Uh, so you're going to have to definitely take it to a specialized person who can work on this truck. Your maintenance bill is going to be a lot higher on a diesel truck versus a gas. Now you go to a gas truck, it's a cheaper cost getting into, eh, reasonably. But you're also going to have a lot less maintenance bill as far as cost for repairs and maintenance. And you're not going to have to have a specialized technician Pretty much any place across the country has a garage someplace that can work on a gas truck. If they have the right electronics, they can pretty much figure out what's wrong with that vehicle. So, really, it just depends on what you really want when it comes down to a truck. Like I said, the biggest thing is make sure that it is the right size to pull your RV so you're safe. You're not killing yourself. You're not killing somebody else. That's really what you need to take into account whether it be diesel or gas. Now, you know, just be mindful of that. Uh, whatever vehicle you strikes your fancy to purchase, just make sure it's big enough for your application. Now, don't be like some of these guys running down the road with Jeep Wranglers, towing a nice little 20 some foot travel trailer that, you know, and you see it sagging in the back. Guess what? That little travel trailer, dry weight's probably about 5,000 pounds and that Jeep's capability is about 1,500 pounds, guys. You can't do that. That can't be safe. What do I know? I'm just a trucker for almost 30 years. It just can't be safe. When it comes to these newer trucks, they have made leaps and bounds with a gas truck. So you're definitely going to get a lot more power than what you used to get out of a gas truck. And you're definitely going to get a lot better respectable numbers as far as torque goes. When you're comparing the 2022 models. So we're actually going to compare the big three, Dodge, Ford, and Chevrolet. And we're also going to consider the GMC as well because it's basically just a debadged Silverado. So, you know, it's going to have the same weight tow ratings and engine options as the Silverado. So keep in mind, the GMC is the same thing as the Silverado. But anyway, coming in at the highest horsepower rating is Dodge. Ooh, hey, Dodge. 
Maybe you should have rethought your payload capacity and your towing ability. But I believe that's just because you guys haven't graduated from that coil spring setup. Because if you're right behind a Dodge, you see them in a 2500 variety, they're kind of all sagging in the butt. That would be the coil spring versus leaf. You know, get a little bit more on there, you might get a little bit more towing capacity out of that. But you actually get the leaf spring when you go with a 3500 and bigger with Dodge. And we're talking about the 2500s today. But anyway, Dodge is coming in with 6.4 liter Hemi, 410 horsepower, 429 foot pounds of torque. Quite impressive. But conventional tow rating is only 10,520 pounds on this drop with a max fifth wheel of 15,040 pounds. All the horsepower, can't really haul anything. But then we swing out to the 2022 Ford with a 6.2 liter gasoline engine coming in at the lowest horsepower rating. Okay, Ford, you're trying. Because you brought the 7.3. But the 6.2 liter comes out with a 385 horsepower with 405 foot-pounds of torque, and they are claiming that it will haul 16.7 conventional and 16.7 on a fifth wheel. Did you guys just not add any more numbers to that, or just 16.7 is a good number to throw out? I don't know. But anyway, when you come to the Chevrolet and the GMC models with a 6.6 liter gas, those have a horsepower rating of 401 horsepower, 464 foot-pounds of torque, with a conventional towing capacity of 14,500 pounds up to the fifth wheel of 17,370 pounds. Whoa, GM. Are you really able to meet those numbers? The only way you're really going to know is if you actually take one of these trucks out and put it to the test. And I'm not rich, so I can't uh, just go haul on a bunch of stuff with three brand new trucks. Uh, unless somebody wants to donate me some trucks, I can do these kind of comparisons for you. But we're just going to go by what this is directly off of our website, what these will pull. Now, the prices on these trucks are still astronomical, regardless if they're gas diesel or not but we're not going to talk about the diesel prices because i just want to let you know there's another option out there other than diesel and gas trucks are definitely putting out a big fight with the diesel trucks now chevrolet seems to be going a little harder at the fight with a little bit more you know but uh towing capacity but the dodge does have impressive numbers i will give it that they do have impressive horsepower and torque rating but that's just not enough just not enough guys you go back to the drawing board ford i think you're trying to figure it out by going to the 7.3 but i believe that 7.3 is not available in the 250 i think i'm not certain but i believe you have to go to the f350 to get to 7.3 uh, now i've heard that 7.3 gas engine is quite impressive i have not had one but i have seen some people who are actually hauling big fifth wheels with a 7.3 that's probably going to be your better option honestly if you go with a ford go with the f350 now we're comparing 250 three quarter ton trucks instead of the one tons so now we have some sort of baseline of where to go now rule of thumb is this is what i do whatever the manufacturer says their tow rating is i always go anywhere between 500 to 1000 pounds less than what they say it's capable of just so i know i stay in that sweet spot now there's gonna be people argue with me oh you can't do that their numbers are right well yeah i'm going by my own personal feelings as being a truck driver for almost 30 years and i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna do what i do uh you do what you gotta do you do you boo boo and uh but I'm going to always give myself that extra cushion of 500 to 1,000 pounds that that truck cannot pull. Um, but they are definitely quite impressive for gas trucks now. Uh, diesel definitely has a lot more torque. There's no argument here, guys. But the biggest thing is, taken from this video, is the gas trucks are capable. You can save some money at the pump. I say that lightly and laugh because there's nobody saving any money at the pump whether you got gas or diesel. But... A gasser truck is easier to obtain. You can find a gasser. Those are a lot simpler to find. Well, maybe because everything's been kind of crazy as far as buying new vehicles here lately, especially when you get to the three quarter ton or bigger market. Trucks are just, you know, as soon as they're here, they're gone. Um, so arm yourself with some knowledge before you actually get into the dealership. Know what your tow ratings are, know what your RV is going to weigh. Uh, that way you can choose the appropriate size tow rig to pull your RV. Okay, so now we've seen the numbers that these manufacturers are claiming from their horsepower, their torque, up to their max towing ability. 
Now it's up for us. Do we really believe it? Time to make our own educated guess on which vehicle may be right for us and our application. Well, guys, it really comes down to personal preference. What vehicle you like, They both, all three of them are putting out pretty respectable numbers. Dodge is a little lacking in uh, tow capacity, but they do have the higher horsepower rating in the mix. GM, second highest horsepower rating, but has the highest torque rating in the gas market. And GM's also claiming the best tow capacity in the market. Now, Ford, here there. I still don't understand how it goes 16.7 here and 16.7 there, but, you know, I'm, what do I know? I'm a truck driver. I'm not an engineer. But, I'm just going to say this out loud, somebody was maybe embellishing on what their vehicle can tow conventionally. Or we're going to leave it there. So guys, like I said, really it does boil down to what you want, your personal preference. But the biggest thing you got to take from this is always buy the appropriate sized rig for your application. I know a lot of these RV companies nowadays, they're manufacturing these half-ton towable RVs, especially the fifth wheels. Guys, you really don't want to pull one of these with a half-ton truck. Now that half-ton truck will probably pull that RV just fine up and down the road, but there's a lot of things that that half-ton truck will not do. That is stop it properly. They don't want to discuss that. Now that's one of the biggest things you always got to remember. You got to be able to stop whatever you're pulling. So guys, take this information, do with it what you will, but maybe this can help you figure out what your next tow vehicle is going to be. Guys, I want to say thanks for watching, hanging out with me today, and we'll talk to you guys down the road. Be safe, happy RVing.